Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIcke.com. I don't know if you've seen the BBC documentary or feature made by um, a woman called India Rakusin called Fractured, The Death of Max Spears. It aired a few days ago. It's on iPlayer. You can watch it now. It was a um, report, basically, into the death of Max and what has happened since. And it featured an interview with uh, his mum, Vanessa, who's going to join me in a minute, and some of the people who knew Max. Now, a lot of people have been expressing their opinion about it on social media today. I watched it today. I won't express an opinion on it yet. We'll say um, we'll see what Vanessa has to say about it when she joins us in uh, in a second. Now, uh, Max died in July last year. Um, he he was in uh, Warsaw at the time, and he died on the 16th of July. He was in the home of a woman called Monica Duval, who's a sci-fi publisher. They'd been recently holidaying in Cyprus. Uh, the doctor said he'd had a high fever for a day, and then, mysteriously, he vomited dark brown liquid. I think Monica Duval said... It was two litres of um, liquid. Now, Max, Max's body was brought back to the UK a week later. At that time, the post-mortem said the reason for his death was inconclusive. Now, shortly after that, um, well, uh, a month or so after that, we spoke with Max's mum, Vanessa, and um, she joins us again on the line now. Vanessa, welcome back can to you the programme. I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, great. I wasn't sure. Loud and yes. clear. Yeah, no, I was just introducing you there and I didn't have your good, good. your microphone turned on. You know, um, yeah. I don't mean to be um, insensitive when I say how are you, because it's only been a short time, but, but how are you? How have you been coping with it? Yeah, it goes it goes up and down, just like I guess anybody would say. It goes up and down and I'm better when I'm in, uh, when I'm in a fighting mode is when I'm uh, at my best, Richie, I'm, when I'm... Uh, when I'm dealing with things and doing what I need to do for him, that's when I'm at my best. Not to um, to, to be going over old ground to to to, to mm. upset you, but for we've listeners all over the world, and some of them won't have heard you speaking with me before. Remind right. them um, as, as much as you want or as little as you want what happened in terms of when you were informed that Max had passed away last year. Yes. Uh, just to, to summarize it, um, it was a, uh, I'd been out, it was a summer evening. And when I got in, I saw a, uh, I saw a message on my uh, email that said Max has died. That was how I found out. Hadn't expected it at all. Everything was fine up until then. And um, then it was frantic for the next couple of hours while I tried to get through on the telephone to someone, uh, and that was Monica Duval, which the name is known out there. And um, finally I got through and she answered and she said, Vanessa, Vanessa, Max has died. I couldn't believe it. I was out of my mind. And um, I could hear several people in the background um, in the house, which I now know to be absolutely true. There were four or five other people other than her there. And uh, there were a couple of people on the telephone. I don't know who they were either, but certainly by the time I spoke to her, he was uh, he was definitely dead. He was gone. And they weren't able to tell you very much at the time, other than no. that he'd been I ill. could just yeah. hear people scrambling around, which is what I've said, and I've been argued with about people about this. And and some people have said, well, they're Polish. They wouldn't have been speaking English. They sure were speaking English. I absolutely heard them, and they were saying, get cups of vinegar, cu- vinegar, get cups of blood, get cups of milk. And I heard it as clear as I can hear you right now. Um, so I know there was some effort to do something with his soul. I know that, that, that I know. Cups of vinegar um, and cups of blood. And, and you're, yeah. you're, you're absolutely convinced them. Um, and there's no reason why, you know, why you wouldn't be able to understand that if that, if that's what's, what's being said. Um, yeah. The next, the next you knew then was his body was repatriated here. There yes. Was, there was um, a postmortem that said inconclusive. And this is very yes. interesting to me because Max, and I watched Fractured, and I'll ask you your opinion on it in a few minutes, but um, 
What, what, what I was compelled by was your honesty and your integrity. And you said, Thank you. no, no, I was, Vanessa, because it can't mm-hmm. be easy. It can't be easy to say, yeah, Max, sometimes maybe he took things he shouldn't have taken and, and stuff yeah. like that. That can't have been easy. But a toxicology yeah. report on Max, even a week after his death, would have, mm-hmm. would have demonstrated, and I've looked into this, would have demonstrated clearly if, yes. if, if a substance overdose had caused his death. But they didn't right say away. that. They never said that. They just said no, because you've got to look. This is the thing that's that's killing me every day. You've got to look at George Michael, Prince, these these huge names, and within a week we hear, don't we? Um, but we don't hear with Max. So um, I, I'm helpless with that one. I'm absolutely helpless. A lot of people, I don't know. A lot of people have watched the BBC um, feature which is on BBC iPlayer. If anybody wants to see it and they haven't seen it, it's on BBC iPlayer. If you're outside the UK, it's on YouTube now. Um, I've got an opinion on it. What, what, what it, they came and spoke with you. The, the journalist came mm-hmm. and spoke with you and they filmed. And she seemed to be sincere and compassionate when she was speaking with you. Looking at the yeah. finished article, Vanessa, what, what do you think of it? I think that um, she was sincere and compassionate. And I think what it comes across as is a mother who's in terrible pain. It made me cry looking at myself (laughs) Um, at the loss of her son. In terms of looking any deeper as to what's gone on, it didn't do that. It talked about uh, this, this foolish woman, Madeline, whatever her name is, talking and reporting that Max was schizophrenic, which I can promise you he was not. It talked about um, his drug abuse in the past, which Max himself has talked about openly. Uh, it's like I, I was always worried they'd try and hang it on that. Um, and it gently went through my sorrow. So it was sad for me. But did it actually dig into what went on that night? No. It didn't. My, That's my opinion. My big concern with it, and I'm a journalist, I'm a real journalist, Mm-hmm. I don't say that with any arrogance whatsoever, but I've been through national and commercial radio. And mm-hmm. my big concern with it was the amount of time it spent with one or two people who mm-hmm. come from a conspiracy background. And they were featured quite a lot in it. And it seemed to me that the in, in, in that part of the documentary, she was kind of playing, the presenter was playing a kind of a Louis Theroux role, that she was mm-hmm. basically kind of... She wasn't smirking and grinning at the camera, but she was letting nope. she was letting conspiracy theorists talk very strongly about a multitude of different conspiracy theories, as mm-hmm. if to associate Max with them. The underlying narrative being, you know, that well, Max had some pretty wacky ideas about things. Yes, and I didn't like that. I'm talking about Miles Johnson, nope. who, whom I met in in London at TPV. I've never had anything to do with him, so I have no axe to grind with him whatsoever. No. But I thought there was an inordinate, inordinate amount of time given over to Max's view, uh, excuse me, to Miles's view of the world and what's going on. And that made no, that made no journalistic sense to the no programme. No link. No, right? no whatsoever as to what happened to, uh, to Max. And it was almost kind of trying to taint Max and paint him as this lunatic conspiracy theorist. Yes. While Miles well, was waxing uh, lyrical yes, about all these yes. conspiracies. And that's the only thing I would... And, and this is typical of the BBC. Uh, unfortunately, typical. this is what they do. Yeah. Right. They, they focused on that. We also had some little sort of 30-second clips of individuals saying kind of kooky things, like, you know, Max jumped into Orlando Bloom's body, things that made, made Max sound silly. Max's life was given over to this cause, he was a dedicated believer in what he was doing. His knowledge was profound. He blew me away with his knowledge and his belief in what he was doing. I, that's That was his focus in life. So to make it lightweight and to make it seem like things like that that were focused on was not doing him justice. No, because he's uh, not that's here. That I felt. Yeah, and, and, and you, you know what? You've far more eloquently put that than I could put it. That's exactly what they were doing. They were basically using the thoughts and the beliefs of Miles to try and attribute those thoughts and beliefs to Max without Max being there, obviously, to say, well, no, I don't necessarily agree with that or, or I think this or I think that. 
And it right, was, which Max would have done. Which he would have, have jumped done, down yeah. it, and he jumped down Miles's throat many times. And Miles has been a very gu- uh, a very kind guy to me since Max uh, died. It, it's not a question of knocking Miles. No, not said. at all. No, question God, no, no, no. Of he didn't edit that. that. There wasn't a link. You know, Miles no. gave Max a platform. Max started to take off. Max was. The thing is, he didn't do it for anything other than that that's what he believed in. And his belief system was profound. And so to make it seem lightweight or to, to, to even actually to make it seem about me and my loss, which is unbelievably terrible, is not what Max would want. There is a lot more that needs to be out there. Um, but I believe uh, that it will come out when um, we get this thing to what I intend to be a trial. Then I think a lot more will be shown. There has to be an inquest, doesn't there? Oh, there's going to be an inquest. There's got it's to be an inquest. It's whether from the inquest there's a trial. I mean, there's so many... If you want to spend a couple of minutes, Vanessa, reminding the listeners the difficulties you had in the beginning, getting information yeah. about what happened. I mean, if you want to talk about that, because this is this is very key to our suspicion that there are some very, very wrong um, aspects to this. There's something very untoward going on with the death of Max. Um, because yes. of the way that it was handled. Talk to us about the anomalies in the way things well, were handled. It's very, it's very, untoward is a very good word. It was frightening. I reached the point after about three months when I thought this is going to close down on me and I started to be very afraid. And I think that's roughly when I spoke with you, actually, as as fate would have it. It was that they, they wrote to me and from Poland and said, we're going to close the case because there is nothing more to be said but actually nothing had been said. Now, when that guy, the the prosecutor, came on, he said, I wasn't informed for a month and a half after Max's death that he had died. It's supposed to be within 48 hours. So he wasn't informed for one hell of a long time afterwards. They told me I had to pay a thousand pounds, which, God bless him, David Icke, actually came forth and stepped up and, and, and presented that to keep the case alive. It would not be here today if it hadn't been for that. Turns out that they hadn't been informed in the first place. So there was um, a terrible miscommunication. Nobody had done the right thing. Max died, God help me, at six o'clock in the evening. He didn't leave that house till 11 o'clock the next morning. And uh, all I ask is what the hell happened and you know when you talk about a month and a half to be informed um when it should have been done in 48 hours the uh, the coroner yes. that you i know you've looked into it you can't find another example of that happening can you that, no that was unique to max right yes this is what's so bizarre bizarre what I want to talk about briefly, and I don't know how much of this you know, and I guess it's all part of your, your own investigative journey, Vanessa, but yeah. I, I know, I mentioned when we first spoke, I'd been in touch with Max very, very briefly to arrange right. him to come on and speak with us at a future date. And um, I didn't know anything about Max having, you know, um, used substances in the past or any of that. He, he came across to me in his communications with me as being incredibly lucid, um, mm-hmm. very well written and bright and breezy. And mm-hmm. he had said to me that he was traveling, that he was going to be traveling. And that when he got back from the various things he was doing, he wanted to come on. And what we were going to be talking about was we were going to be talking about the, the use of trauma in, in child abuse, mind yes. control, satanic paedophilia. Now, I know... Yes that that was an area of um, interest and research that he was hugely into. And a lot of people, and of course you have to be very careful what you believe, and to be fair to the BBC, they made the point, there is a lot of nonsense online, there are a lot of so-called conspiracy researchers, and they just invent the most outlandish nonsense with with no evidence. But there are some good people who knew Max and knew of him, and they said they thought that he was chasing, um, not literally chasing him, but through his research, um, across Europe, well-known people who are abusing children abroad. Yeah. Has anything you've learned, Vanessa, since we last spoke, reinforced that belief that he was maybe look? He was looking at some people whom, you know, had a lot to lose if they were to be investigated by somebody like him. Yes, yes. 
and um, towards the end of his time here, he was putting some names out there, um, and this is where you have to be very careful. Uh, but there were certainly some names that he was putting out there of people who were, uh, you know, known names, and uh, whether that was part of the reason why he's not here today, I'm not certain, but I do know that he reached a point where he said to me, Mom, I, I can't, I'm either going to follow this through and say what I think, or I'm going to step away and do nothing. So there was a point, and I think it was kind of caught at that point, that he was going to expose some things that, not only that he believed, but that he had done some digging into. He spent his life digging and, and you know, inquiring and traveling. So, yeah, I think there was. I'm not going to put out there some of the names. Oh, God, don't you. last yeah, thing yeah. I need is any trouble or you. Or us but, or, but definitely, or, David, yeah. or any of us. But you know, there was definitely that element which has gone through my mind many times, is to whatever went on, he, I, I absolutely believe he was shut up. I don't have that. I don't have any question about it all. And we should this, remind. And, and as, just to say with the drug use, he was here for three years after my mum died. He came over to be with me and he was here for three years and he was absolutely clear and clean. And I saw him every single day. So, yeah, Max talked openly about his, his drug issues in the past. He talked to try and help people. Uh, but... Whatever happened in Poland was a very distinctive shift. Let me just um, let me just do a quick uh, recap. It's um, nineteen yeah. minutes to the top of the year. Vanessa Bates is on yeah. the show again. It's good to have Vanessa back under these circumstances, terrible circumstances for her. Um, Vanessa is um, Max Spears' mum. Max is a very well known. Well, he's becoming very well known. A conspiracy researcher who uh, died in very mysterious circumstances on July 16th last year in Warsaw. Vanessa has been describing the anomalies around the deaths, um, strange coincidences, strange circumstances, people not being informed, coroners not knowing, uh, results being given as inconclusive, toxicology reports throwing nothing up. Max was investigating people, some of them very well-known people. We know this to be an absolute fact. And Vanessa, at this point, it's worth mentioning again Max told you a few days before he died mm, that he yeah. expected that his life was going to end. And what that tells me is he believed he was being followed by people. Yeah, he absolutely did. And he not only said it to me, but his very close friend here, uh, who lives around the corner in Canterbury, who he's known since he was eight, he said the same thing to him on the phone. He said, look out because I am walking in dangerous waters here and I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and his friend said to him, come back home, get out of there now. But of course he didn't. And don't forget also his computer, which is now with the police, was wiped. His computer on which everything. I did so much research with him before he went into stuff he wanted to talk about. The computer's empty. There's nothing on it. That's very unusual. That And the phone, they've been wiped completely, the right? The phone apparently was dropped in the bath. Have you ever heard such a thing? Am I Which right? is why apparently yeah. they couldn't reach me that night because my phone number was on his mobile phone which had been dropped in the bath that night. Um, was, I mean, nobody knew him better than you. Was Max in a relationship with Monica? <laughs> There's a one, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Monica, I'm sure will listen to this. Max was not looking for a relationship. He was just coming out of a relationship with Sarah and he was looking for uh, expanding his belief system. Poland seemed interested. He was interested in traveling. He fell in love with Poland, actually. He thought Poland was beautiful. Warsaw was gorgeous. Um, Monica offered him business opportunities. Uh, was he in a relationship? I don't know if there was anything that went on. All I know is he only knew her for three months. So for her to present as a life partner was stretching it. What contact have you had with Monica recently? I had contact with her for the first two months um, after he died because I wanted to find out as much as I could. She was devastated, heartbroken and kind. But what she never gave me was what I needed, which is what I still need, which is I'm a fly on the wall. It's that night. What the hell happened? And why did you keep him there? Um, and that I have never 
got. And once I found I wasn't going to get it, I I cut off from her. Yeah, the BBC, it must be said, in their feature, tried to make contact with her but couldn't. Right. Um, we, of course, would extend the opportunity for her to come on yes. and talk about it here. And I'm sure many other presenters of programmes would do as well. Or well, how about Alex? How about the guy that did the interview when he's half out of his mind and he continued an interview? That would be a good one for you to speak to, wouldn't it? Well, this is a strange one. And you're referring there to somebody called Alec Berdovich. That's it. Now, he did an interview with Max. How, how long before the 16th was that? It was a few days, was it? It was the 12th. And he doesn't sound well in himself, Max, in that. How Sounds you, out of his mind. When you say out of his mind, Vanessa, do you think that yeah. he was on something? He was, if he was on something, I, I believe that it was something that was given to him and not something that he took. Because I've never seen Max or heard Max like that. And I've known him since the day he was born. And I know all about his issues. Um... And to do an interview when you when you're listening to somebody like that, and to say that you can't uh, take do photographs because it's not an appropriate place, it's all more than mysterious. It's incredibly bizarre. Yeah, what, what, bizarre. Of of the things said in that interview, what disturbs you most about it? Uh, the fact that there was strange noises in the background all the time, strange burning fire and clicking, that there was some woman in the background who I assume was Monica who was filming it, who was rubbing his back and saying, come on. It sounded like there was some strange massage going on. It was more the background stuff, to be honest, than what Max said. He'd seen Richard III's castle and stuff in Cyprus. Um, that The content was all right. It was the state of him and the bloody trampolining stuff. What I can't understand is why the the guy. I mean, look, I've I've been around a long time, and as as journalists, you're you're competitive, and you want to, you know, you want to be sharp, and you want to be ahead of the game. Let anybody contradict that. We all want the truth, ultimately. At least the people I know in the independent media. But you're still competitive. You want to scoop people. However, yes. I could never ever imagine me or anybody connected to this program mm -hmm. releasing that interview after Max had died. What no. was the point of that? Well, and also, Richie, you would say to me, if that was me tonight, you'd say, Vanessa, you sound like you're tired. Let's pick this up tomorrow, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you would, yeah. You wouldn't yeah. carry on. You yeah, have you when, when you're speaking with somebody like that on location, you have a duty of care to them. Yes. There's no doubt about that. And if he was severely under the weather there and you thought maybe he needs to flush the contents of his stomach or yeah. something has been slipped to him, you'd say, right, yeah. son, let's go, let's go to A&E. We'll get you sorted out. Right. Let's the get other, you to a doctor. The here. other thing that comes to my mind there is that if he was ever not feeling well, Max is a bit of a, a, a fusser. You know, he's one of those... Those men of which you, there are many of you who makes a fuss about not being well. If he wasn't well, if he had something that wasn't right, he would say, Mum, I've got to go to the hospital. Yeah. Or, Mum, I've got to go to the doctor. It, was, it, it doesn't add up to me that he tolerated that kind of feeling and just sat there. No, it doesn't make sense. I asked you when we first spoke, and it was still absolutely, I imagine, chaotic. It probably still is chaotic, but I mean, it was absolutely yeah. tumultuous at the time. What mm. support have you had from yours and Max's MPs locally? Have anybody has anybody been useful to you from from a political background? Uh, I got a I, I I got a letter after the media exposure from from uh, Brazier, who's the local MP, saying that he was going to push uh, the various people so that things would move. And in truth, it did happen after that. So, yes, I think the media actually were very positive in many ways. So it was the MP, um, you know, and, and really, I guess that's, well, and the police, the police have been, it's all amazingly, you know, people complain about the media. Without the media, I don't think I would be sitting here today with the case that I have. You know, it's amazing, really it's amazing you're saying that because... At the moment, the mainstream media is under attack by people like Donald Trump mm -hmm. being called yes. fake news and stuff like that. Uh, and, of course, we have a big problem with, with much of the conduct of the mainstream media. But to 
to paint it as black and white and to say that mm-hmm. there are some decent people working within it. There are. I mean, the Daily Absolutely. Mail, the Daily Mail came and spoke with you, and they didn't twist and they didn't bend your words. Yep. They basically took the story and yep. ran, ran with it as a straight story. So. I'm glad you said that because we've been talking well, a lot about that Well, and it shakes up you know? the authorities. You know, yeah. once it's there, then it's looked at again, and that's absolutely the case with Max. Vanessa, what, what, what's the next step now? Are you still... Uh, I know the coroner has the laptop and the phone. What, yeah. what are you waiting for now? What's the next step for you? Inquest. The inquest. Yeah. Now, can you explain, inquest. To, our, can you explain to our listeners... And I'll be honest with you, explain to me as well, I've covered inquests as a journalist. How does one go about getting uh, the launch of an inquest? How do you do that? The, the inquest just has to, there has to be enough uh, in, information and enough evidence to for the coroner to decide that there needs to be an inquest. That has been decided and the inquest will go ahead here in this country. The questions, all the evidence will be presented. The questions will be asked. I will have an opportunity to ask questions. And from that, with the police there and and all the other people who have been involved, there is a decision made as to whether there is a case. And in this particular case, there's two avenues. One is the authorities um, in Poland and how they handled the case. And the other is the people who were involved that that night and what went on. How... How sympathetic and how sensitive have the Warsaw police been to you? I know that they've interviewed a number of people who were there. Mm. Now, of course, you being his mum, I can only imagine the your desire and your, you're, you're desperate to hear what these people are telling the, the police. Are they sharing information with you, the Warsaw police? It's all, uh, the, the situation is that we have hundreds of pages uh, of information and it's all come flooding in since uh, the media picked up on this the first time around and it's all in Polish and we now have to reach the point where it has to be officially translated it can't be that I can get somebody who speaks Polish it's got to be a legal translator uh, but truth is we have from being blocked and being told you know there was the, the, there was one person was not available because he's had an injury and another one, you know, it was all like a brick wall. Now, I believe everybody's been interviewed. There are many, many, many interviews, but all in Polish at the moment. Vanessa, I want to just uh, again wish you the very best with it Thank in you. the future. Um, nobody, nobody knows what you're going through unless they've been no. through it themselves. I haven't a clue. I think mm-hmm. a grave injustice has been done to you, and I'm pretty sure that harm came to Max. I, I'm, I'm based on my gut. I don't, I can't prove it, but based mm. on things I've looked at for years, somebody, I don't, I believe somebody didn't like what he was doing. Yes, and I believe he was probably warned, and he kept yep. going down the roads he was going down, and I believe he was murdered. I really do believe that. Yeah, no, I, I no proof, think of course, he would be here yeah. today. Listen, we um, we'll um, obviously stay in touch with you and watch it yes. very closely. And yes, continue if there's a trial, we'll watch it every day, right? Every single day we'll cover it. <laughs> all right, Richie, thank you for having me on. Not at all, Vanessa. Look after yourself. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, the lovely Vanessa Bates on the line to us there, um, Max Spears' mother. You can watch that BBC feature on the BBC iPlayer if you're in the UK. If you're not in the UK and you want to watch it, it's been put on YouTube. So you need only put Max Spears Fractured, BBC Fractured was the name of the programme there, and you can watch it and make your own mind up. Like I said, my big concern with it, being as objective as I possibly can be, even though I'd made my mind up having read what, you know, information we did have last year and having listened to Vanessa last year and having looked very closely at what Max Spears had been doing and the people he'd been working with and listening to various interviews that Max had given on various media um, platforms at various different times. My conclusion was that he was asking questions about people and he was speaking to victims of child abuse whom were undoubtedly naming people uh, to him, to Max Spears. And the conclusion I draw 
again, without any proof, because how could I have any definitive proof? I don't. But the conclusion you draw is that somebody didn't like that. Somebody didn't like it. And and some harm was planned for him, and I think it came to pass. 